1989, Sega released the Genesis in North America, a 16-bit console known for its amazing graphics, its quirky sound, and of course, its role in the infamous console wars of the 1990s. If you grew up in the era of the Genesis, or Mega Drive as it's known for the rest of the world, you'll no doubt also remember Sega at the time for their take no prisoners attitude of marketing the Genesis. Leaning on loud and irreverent characters, edgy games, and blood codes, the Genesis felt like the cooler console for an edgier gamer. Looking back, it can be fun to remember the days of blast processing and Nintendo don't. But because of the technology and television standards of the day, it can be hard to play some of your favorite games today on modern televisions. Many modern TVs and monitors don't even have inputs compatible with the original hardware. And if they do, they don't handle the video signals very well at all. This can turn the amazing games you remember into a muddy, hard to play mess. Luckily for us, we live in the future. In recent years, there have been several great ways to play the games you remember from the Genesis on modern TVs and monitors, all without sacrificing the great graphics, music, and gameplay that we remember from the 90s. Today, we'll look at some of my favorite all-in-one solutions that'll work great on your living room TV. Let's start with the Hyperkin retro consoles like the Retron 5. The Retron 5 uses software emulation running on low-powered hardware to emulate the aging consoles. The console has a number of tricks up its sleeve that you may find very appealing. First, it can play games from several consoles, including the Genesis, the NES, the Famicom, the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and even the Game Boy Advance. And it can do this by using original cartridges from those systems. There are unofficially ways to load ROMs onto this device, but I've never really gotten it to work reliably and found the process to be laborious and fussy. It also can use original controllers from the NES, Super Nintendo, and the Genesis, which you will want to use because the included controller is hot garbage. Like, it's shockingly bad. Emulation is overall pretty good, but if you compare it back to back with some of the other solutions on this list, you can definitely feel input lag and see some imperfect emulation. But for the current selling price of under $120, it's hard to argue with the value presented here, especially for those who just want to dabble their toe in retro gaming, but not dive head first into some really costly solutions. The Analog Mega SG is a brand new console designed to play like the original hardware of the Sega Genesis, but because it's modern, it's able to display the classic games of the Genesis using modern HDMI cables for a 1080p display. It does this by utilizing an FPGA, a programmable chip that can be made to function like that of the original Motorola 68000 and the other hardware that makes a Genesis Blast process. This is different than software emulation in that this is new hardware functioning as though it was original hardware. There's no software layer causing input latency or other issues between your games and the system. Analog claims the benefit of this is zero lag and total accuracy while running on modern displays at up to 1080p. Impressive for sure, and in my time with the system, these claims seem to be true. The Mega SG allows for the use of Genesis, Mega Drive, and with an included adapter, Sega Master System cartridges. And after downloading and installing an unofficial firmware, this console can play ROMs for the Genesis, Sega Master System, Game Gear, and ColecoVision. The Mega SG does not ship with controllers, so you'll have to provide your own. Original Sega gamepads can be used, as well as new reproductions by Retrobit or 8-Bit Do. From the time you open the box of the console, you can see this is a much more high-end device than other emulation-based consoles like the Retron 5. The plastics used in construction feel solid and durable, not creaky, and the industrial design evokes the memory of the Model 1 Sega Genesis while being a completely new design. It just feels high-end. Overall, this is a great way to play Genesis cartridges and ROMs with very little lag and pristine 1080p video. I'd highly recommend the Jailbreak firmware as it's easy to do and provides a ton of new functionality. 
The Mister is another FPGA-based device that, like the analog Mega SG, can be programmed to mimic original hardware. Unlike Analog's offerings, it cannot play original cartridges, so you must obtain ROMs of your favorite games to play on it. However, what it does offer is very compelling. FPGA-based hardware emulation of dozens of classic consoles, computers, and arcade hardware. Genesis, Master System, Game Gear, NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, Amiga, and many, many more. All playing as if it were original hardware with low latency and 1080p HDMI for modern displays. It's an awesome device, but definitely not as consumer friendly as something like the Mega SG. While the price to get started is relatively low with just a basic unit starting around $150, once I got mine put together with everything I wanted, like a case and you know USB support, I spent about $600. It's not exactly plug and play either. There's some setup involved and you'll have to provide your own ROMs. I will say that the one I bought came from an Etsy seller named Zero himself and it was pretty much ready to go when it was delivered, but I did pay extra for that service. This is also an open project with contributors around the world developing new cores for it all the time. Updates are frequent and new functionality is being added all the time. For instance, you can turn on turbo mode for the Genesis core to help eliminate slowdown, or you can raise the sprite limit to get rid of the flicker sometimes seen when there's too many sprites shown on the screen. Or entirely new cores can be added, like the one currently in development for Capcom's CPS-1 arcade board. Finally, there's Sega's official solution, the Sega Genesis Mini. Released at a price of $79.99, this mini console features 42 games ported by M2, a Japanese game developer best known for its amazing work in emulation and re-releases of classic games. The Genesis Mini is a faithful reproduction cosmetically of the original Genesis hardware, but at about half the size. Inside, there's an ARM-based CPU that runs a software-based emulation solution for its included games. Also included are two full-size three-button USB controllers. Some have wondered why the later six-button gamepad was not included, but personally, I'm glad to see the three-button gamepad as that's what my original Sega Genesis shipped with back in the day, and it feels authentic to play those old classic games. If you do find that you need a six-button pad, for instance, if you want to play the included Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition, there are great options available aftermarket like the RetroBit 8-button arcade pad with USB for $20 or the 8-bit Do M30 wireless controller for $25. Running software emulation on a low-power CPU can have its issues including latency and desyncs between video and audio, and the Genesis Mini does not feature some of the higher-end features of more robust emulators like look-ahead mode for decreased latency or interpolation for reducing the shimmer that can be seen when uneven pixel sizing is used on a scrolling screen. However, the Genesis Mini does offer some benefits that can't be found on any other solution. For one, it's an official Sega product and the first hardware that Sega has produced since the Dreamcast was discontinued in March of 2001. Also, it's kind of a cool collectible. Cosmetically, it really is faithful to the design of the original Model 1 Genesis, even featuring non-working volume sliders and cartridge port flaps. Currently, it's selling for less than $50, and it's kind of a charming device to both play classic games on and have displayed on your TV stand. So which of these solutions would I recommend? Well, I think they're all really good solutions, to be honest with you. The Sega Genesis Mini is official from Sega. It only comes with 42 games. I've heard there's way to, ways to hack more games onto it, which could be you know, a nice solution, but it is software emulation running on a low powered chip. So there's that. It's not gonna be a perfect solution for some. The Hyperkin Retron 5, I know it gets a lot of flack in the community, 
But to be honest with you, I think it's a really cool device. The fact that you can play cartridges, you can start going to your you know, local retro game store and pick up some of those cartridges you remember as a kid. It's a costly thing, but it's really fun. It's kind of a fun hobby. If you're into playing ROMs, though, it's definitely not your deal. If you're just into playing ROMs, the Mister is an amazing device. It is so capable of so much, and new capabilities are being released all the time. I mean, it's really an exciting thing being part of the Mister community. Um, but you know, it's a really you know, it's a hobbyist kind of thing. It's not a retail product. My favorite device in this list, the one that I like the best, is definitely the Analog Mega SG. It gives me so much that I want. I'm able to play uh, imported Mega Drive cartridges, Genesis cartridges, and Sega Master System cartridges, which is really appealing. For some reason, uh, I stick with games longer if I'm playing them on the cartridge. There's like a sense of ownership there to the game that I don't get when I'm playing on a ROM. But with the Analog Mega SG, I also have the capability of playing ROMs uh, in like homebrews and hacks and all sorts of stuff. So it's a really capable device. It's limited to just kind of like that narrow selection of Sega products pl plus the ColecoVision for some reason. Um, unlike the Mister, which is just so wide ranging, you know, and I have both of those devices. So, I'm, you know, to me, if I'm going to play Sega Genesis games, I'm going to tend to do it on the analog Mega SG. Um but really, you can't go wrong with any of these devices. Uh, they're all really cool in their own way. I know the Hyperkin one gets a lot of hate in the community, but, you know, it's a really cool device for for beginners especially. You know, if you're just getting into retro gaming or you just want to buy a few cartridges and have some fun with your friends, you know, over the weekend, that Hyperkin thing is perfect for that. Just make sure you get different controllers because the controllers it comes with are terrible. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more in the future. See you next time.